Hey, everybody. Thank you so much. If you are watching this um, after we have posted it, thank you, too, for taking the time to watch. I am super excited because uh, my guest today is right in alignment with one of my biggest fascinations. Now, I know a lot of folks in this group may have horses, but not everybody. But I think most people in this group have a pet of some sort. So you know what I mean when I say that we have a serious relationship with our animals. So they're not just you know, dogs tied up in the backyard for most of us, they're, they're actual family members. They're furred and hoofed and feathered family members. And so um, one of my fascinations this year actually has been communicating, animal interspecies communication. And we've discovered in the science world that even different species of monkeys will talk with one another. Uh, marine mammals will not only recognize marine biologists, but they'll actually communicate with them and a couple of occasions help them find their way home and lead their boat when they were lost through the fog. So if, if they're starting to document that, we are not crazy for thinking that our dogs and cats are talking to us or we just don't understand how it works. We don't know what exactly it is. And sometimes I have to admit, I do feel like I have heard what they've been trying to say, and then sometimes I wish I could. So my guest today is somebody that might be able to help us with that because she's pretty darn consistent. She calls herself the real Mrs. Doolittle, and she has a horse whisper. This is Val Hart, and she is an animal communicator to the stars. She got her start over 25 years ago when an injured mare helped her figure out why the large knot on her hip wouldn't heal. As the horse told her story so Val could understand what happened, the wound actually disappeared right before their eyes. So she created a one heart horse peak performance program and system, a five step process that is uh, that works for solving problems with pets. Now that's any pet, I think, right Val? I heard you on one of your videos saying it's for any pet, not just horses now. Her specialties include intuitive life guidance, training, quantum leap therapies, and body talk healing for people and pets to transform health, improve performance, and well-being. She has clients all over the world, and you can learn more about her. We'll tell you how at the end of our little interview here. She has some really cool freebies to give away, and I've experienced them, and you should too. So hang on to the end. We won't be here long. You'll grab that stuff at the end there. But um, thank you for you is it's not just tell me if my new uh, sweater for my dog is something that she likes. It's not that. You really want to do something transformative with people and their and their animals, right? Yes. Thank you so much for saying that. You know, I know a lot of animal communicators, it's like, tell me what color my dog's food bowl is. And, you know, really, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. I, um, I care that you've got a good relationship, that you understand each other, that you're bonded, that you get what I believe is animals are angels, teachers, guides, and healers disguised in furry, feathered, scaled bodies. Um, and that when we learn to recognize, respect, and revere them for who they truly are, they make us better people. They make us the best version of ourselves. So I'm delighted to join you. Thanks, Sandra, for inviting me. I feel right at home with all a bunch of animal lovers. Thank you. So, yeah. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. So I know that one of your specialties, I'm obviously a charismatic cowgirl, our program when you come and work live events is focused around horses. Now, I understand that you do have a specialty for show horses. So if you have horses or just fascinated with them, which may be a, a good percentage of folks, what what do you do with show horses? Do you if they're help help me? How do you make them better? How do you make that work? I love that you asked that. I love horses. I got my start with horses, like the little story you you started with, and you went when you introduced me. Thank you so much. Um, but you know, I got my start working with show horses, pre-Olympic uh, trial dressage horses, hunter jumpers, endurance racing horses, cutting horses, reining horses. You know, you name it. Um, and the the key is, and there's five steps. So the first one is to listen to them. So it, it's the five steps: heart, H-E-A-R-T, right? So H is to hear them. 
So we want to hear what they have to say. They have unique viewpoints. They have stories all their own. They have their experiences and what they were taught and what they are thinking and what the dog down the street or what the horse over there said, you know, what they, they talked about. They have jokes, you know, they have all sorts of stuff going on. They have a whole hidden world, you know, that we can tap into once we know how. But the first thing to, to do when we're having any kind of a problem with any one human or four-legged horse or dog or cat or whoever it is, is to talk about it. We need a, a meeting of the minds and the hearts, you know? And once we understand what each other's viewpoint is, what we can do is partner up. And from that point, the next step is the E for evaluate. What I do, I'm very good, uh, gifted with intuitive medical scanning. You know, I evaluate their uh, training program, their management program. I want to be sure that their diet is exactly right for them, that we're not missing something. You know, I want to be sure that they're not hurting in their body. You know, I want to, and if they are, we have to address it. You know, I mean, horses, especially show horses, are incredible athletes. And they, they go through a lot. It's, it's a tough calling to be a show horse, right? To be a horse. Um, so once we evaluate all right. that and make sure that their training is right, that we're not missing signals and cues, that we don't have confusion, you know, or something, some other kind of resistance, then the next thing we do is action. We take action. It's like, okay, let's solve this pain problem. Let's um, let's change the diet. Let's change the training. Let's change how we're riding, you know, um, and that makes a big difference. The fourth step is clearing the resistance. The R stands for resistance because there's always a natural pushback against any kind of change, even if it's a good change, a positive change. Um, you know, we, we need to heal. There's something going there that needs to be healed. And then the fifth step is where we're going, which is team and teamwork. You know, we are in trust. We have our big hearted, good willed horse that would do anything for us because they know we've got their back. We're not just on their back, we've got their back, you know, and, and we're connected, we're communicating, we're in sync. Um, so that's the five steps. It's the One Heart Horse Program. It's the same five steps I've been using for over 25 years. And it works with other pets as well, right? Yeah, exactly. work with dog. Yes. So yes. can I can I ask a question? Can I take a ticket people with a little bit of hope on their own? Listen, okay, hear them. That's yes. easy for you. And I have to say, but you know, also in your defense, and I'm gonna be totally transparent here, you guys. Years ago, I mean, years ago, I was in between acting jobs. I had way too much money and too much time on my hands and not enough knowledge at the point at that point to know what to do with it to be productive. So I started taking these crazy courses and I signed up for something that was going to say, learn how to, it was called learn how to talk to your dog. And I honestly thought it was a bunch of, a bunch of hocus pocus. Like I just, you know, at the end of the session, this woman says, talk to my dog. She had a border collie there. And I, you know, ask him a question. So everybody asked this dog questions and I'm looking around at 20 people talking to this dog. I'm like, this is ridiculous. And as I was leaving, I heard a woman ask about something that she had seen. And I thought it was totally inappropriate for a border collie to not want to be dirty. Because any border collies I've known have been just rolling in the smelliest stuff around. Right. <laughs> and I stopped because that was in fact what I saw. And the owner goes, no, it's the isn't like, and then I turned around and I came back and I asked her what I had asked him and certainly got the same answers that I got. So I got to tell you, like, even from years ago, I was such a skeptic. I was just going to entertain myself and this really can happen. But how do you, Val, how, how can you tell us to get better at hearing them, at listening? Because we look and we, we put a human emotion on their face. Right. Right. And it's not always the right express, not always the right expression of what they're trying to tell us. I have a feeling. Yeah, that, that's the problem we have as humans. We tend to be in our heads. You know, we're not really mm -hmm. in our bodies. We're not real connected. We're not fully present, you know, and all those things are kind of dangerous for animals. We work on that. A charismatic cowgirl. A charismatic cowgirl. That's what we try. But I'm glad that you said that. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Thank God. Yeah. 
animals are like, oh my God, I'm so worried about you. You are so dense. And like, I don't even know if you're intelligent. I, I'm worried about you. <laughs> you're never, it's like the light, yeah, lights are on, nobody's home. I don't know what to do with you. I do think that, you know, if you if you have a smart dog, I swear that I've had some really intelligent dogs that have looked at me going, you just don't get it, do you? Yeah. You're not very smart. We're yeah. just so smart. <laughs> <laughs> We're human. Yeah, we are. Um, but, you know, the thing is that we need to understand how to send a message, how how energetic transference of communication actually works. And there's three fundamental principles that I teach, and it's the basis for life as we know it. <laughs> um, it it's a big, a big process, um, but it's simple, actually. It's to see, hear, and feel them using your subtle, subtle senses. Um, and I talk a lot about that in my free gift, okay. which is, is here for you guys. Um, yes. It, yeah, I, I have an ebook that it's, it's free to you if you want to go to learnhowtotalktoanimals.com. Um, and it, it's let's at the heart. Let's, yeah, let's say that one more time. Because I know you and I both at times our, our audio is clicking, like zipping in and out, I'm afraid. So let's just repeat it again. It's um, learnhowtotalktoanimals.com. Yeah. And that's what I was talking about, this free gift that you guys should go and grab because it's so cool. Yeah, thank you. It's, a, it's, the, it's an ebook and it's The Hidden Secrets to Communicating with Pets. It will teach you the three fundamental principles for communicating with animals. Um, and it, it has to do with your physical senses. So what do you see? Their body language, how they're acting out, uh, all that stuff. But you need to shift gears to your subtle vision. So you have subtle vision, subtle hearing, subtle knowing. There's claircognizance, clair clairsentience, clairvoyance, all those wonderful intuitive gifts. Um, so we turn those on and activate them. And then in the book, I teach you how to send a message to animals and it works with every animal every time um, and it helps clue them in to what your viewpoint is what you need what they don't know yet uh, what the consequences of a behavior or action might be um, so it it's a wonderful book it'll get you started like wow I mean I, I love it thank you Sandra <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know that's so cool. And I, we, I mean, like I said, this is going to be hard for me because I just want to keep talking to you because I'm fascinated <laughs> with it. But we, we really only we try to keep these under 15 minutes, and we've been on for 14. Can you believe oh, that? So I'm like, oh, I'm well, I might know. Have to come back. I know. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Do, I would love to do more. Right. Right. I would love to do more. Thanks. And Thanks. how uh, is there? Is there is there anything that you can leave us with that um, uh, the free gift is awesome, but is there any like little bit of advice that you can give us that's just say like, you know, for the dog owners out there, I think probably most of the people have a dog. So um, if, if you, if you're trying to figure out why, let's just say your dog is acting up, is there a way that, you know, first thing you need to do is just become centered maybe and look in their eyes or just know that there's hope. Give us some advice. What, what would yeah, you leave there, us there, with? There is hope. They, they really are thinking. Thank you, Linda. I saw a post there. Thank you, Linda. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I think the main takeaway has to be that there is more going on. There's a hidden dialogue that your animals are sharing with you, trying to get across to you all the time. Because if you feel like they're trying to tell you something, that you're missing something, you know, something like that, you feel that, it's true. They probably are. They really yeah. are. Yeah, absolutely. And trust yourself and just be open. Ask questions. Um, be, be willing to share and open your heart and open your mind. Um, you might be amazed at what pops in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's fascinating. And I've been just, I think because of the time and being working around horses, as you know, if you want to get something from horses, you, you have to be present. They don't accept you any other way. So right. I think just from that, I've maybe tripped across a couple of the things that you teach. And I have definitely had more communication going with my, with my animals and my horses in particular. So, and sometimes it does surprise me, the messages that I get, you know, it turns out that the, that it was true. So um, I definitely want to invite everybody to to follow up with you and go to learn how to talk to animals.com. And you can also find Val at Valhart. Right. Dot com. Yes. And in the comments, we have 
how outputs can connect with her. And I would love to have you back on, Val. This was really a lot of fun. So I know I know why the media eats you up now. It's just <laughs> dummy stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Sandra. You made my day, girlfriend. Thank you. Yeah. So keep keep loving uh, animals. They they they're amazing, amazing gifts. Yeah. All yes, right. they are. They keep us grounded, and so do you. Thank you they so cry. much, Val. They All right. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Everybody have a great day. Yes. Bye bye. Bye. Hey, it's Val. I hope you enjoyed that and are now feeling really inspired. There's three things I want you to do next. One, go tell your animals you love them right now. And two, share this with your friends so they can enjoy it too. And the third thing, really important, get your copy of my free ebook, Hidden Secrets to Communicating with Pets. Go to learnhowtotalktoanimals.com. You're going to love it. You'll learn three fundamental communication and connection principles that will help you understand and bond at a deeper level. And you're going to find out how to send a message to animals in three easy steps. It works with every animal, every time. This is good stuff. All right. See you there. Bye.